as you know, David, my, my training is actually not in, in wine science, it's actually in theology. Um, I have a great love for theology and, and I did a lot of um, study of the scriptures. I did four years of ancient Greek so I could read the New Testament in the original language. Uh, but uh, I was teaching religious education and biblical studies at Xavier College. One of the advantages of being a teacher, of course, you always get a holiday around Easter time, two week uh, holiday. And I used to, with my new wife, my brand new wife, Lara, we used to, I, we, we would trundle up the freeway and I'd have those, that time working with dad on, on the vintage and it just became something that I fell in love with, you know. And as much as I enjoyed teaching, uh, I, my heart more and more was captured with this idea of um, being a winemaker. But I always sort of felt, you know, that well maybe my call was to be as a teacher and um, teaching the scriptures and, and that's still very much part of my life. I haven't moved away from that at all. But the idea of being a winemaker kept coming back to me. And you're quite right, I was on a, on a retreat actually. And I went to my uh, Jesuit um, tr retreat director and said, um, I'm having a good retreat, Father. Thank you for you know, setting these scriptures. I'm really enjoying, enjoying the retreat, but I have a problem that every time I sit down to pray, all I can think about is the best, way, be the best method of a fermenting Shiraz. <laughs> and what am I to do with this distraction? And as I like to say, he said, uh, he said uh, just uh, what, seven words, is it, that changed my life. He said, well, why do you assume it's a distraction? As in, well, maybe God's trying to tell you something. You know? and, and of course, at that point, I stopped pushing, pushing it away and let it just come to me that, yes, maybe I could be a winemaker. And within six months, we'd packed up and left Melbourne and moved back to the family business. And I took up the position as uh, general manager and winemaker at Clonakilla. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. The business has just gone from strength to strength to strength. And it's just, if, you know, if we want to use some theological term, it seems truly blessed. So I think maybe I, I, was, uh, I was hearing the right message after all. What's the secret of the success? It's a good question, and it's a, you know, there's, a, there's an element of mystery in it, too, and, uh, that, which is a fancy way of saying I'm not really sure. I, I think the principles are quite straightforward. You have to have a good site. Uh, that's the starting point. And having found a good site, which my dad did in 1971, and almost by accident stumbling upon this subdivision out there at Murray Bateman, Murrum Bateman, uh, it shares that the same climate as Canberra, it's only half an hour from here. Uh, but the soils are a bit different. It's, it's volcanic soil where we are. So decomposed granite is probably a simple way of describing it. Um, and I don't know, just something, way, but what, something about the way those slopes roll, the way the wind moves through, the way the temperature drops down at night but it gets quite warm during the day. All of those factors and more just seem to be perfectly suited for viticulture right where we are in that spot there at Murray Bateman. So getting the right site is your first thing. Uh, secondly, you have to work out then which variety or varieties of grape are going to be the most effective at giving that site a voice. So we, in, the, in the wine trade, and we get this from the French, I think, they have this idea of terroir or the landscape. And they have a view that the role of uh, uh, the vineyard is to give the landscape a voice. So, and, and I, I love that idea. And it's true, you know, we can make, um, and we do in fact make from our own vineyard at Murray Bateman, which now say covers 32, 33 acres. We have lots of different sections where we have Shiraz, different, and they're all slightly different, slightly different aspects, sloping slightly differently towards the sun, the soil changes a bit. We would make 15 to 20 different batches of Shiraz from, that, from our vineyard, and they're all subtly different every year. All of them giving their own little slant on what that vineyard is having to say. So, get the right site, get a good site, and then find a variety of varieties which are going to effectively allow that site to express itself. And for us in the Canberra district now, and particularly at Murray Bateman, we think if you had to just choose two varieties, you'd say Shiraz and Riesling. Something about the Shiraz that we make at Murray Bateman and the Riesling that we make here, on those soils in that climate, it just has a, a dignity and a perfume and a subtlety and a complexity which really is, um, from a wine lover's point of view, seriously interesting. It offers the Australian wine scene, if you will, something new, a new take on Shiraz. It's, 
it's spicy and savoury, so it's a little bit like Victorian Shiraz in that regard. But then it has this gorgeous sort of floral violet rose petal character to it, uh, you know, which is so interesting and distinct. And, it's, and the tannins, you know, they tend to be different from the sort of tannins you get in Shiraz that comes from the Barossa, which tends to be big and rich and full, which is of course what we love about those big South Australian Shirazes. But in Canberra, Omar and Bateman, the tannins are much silkier. It's closer in style, if you like, to a Pinot Noir almost, which is a much lighter form of red. But then it's not light either. It's not like, it's, it's very fine. It's got a lot of finesse. It's got a lot of allure, perfume and structure. Silky tannins and lovely soaring, almost floral characters to the nose. This is, um, it's very distinctive and increasingly uh, people are looking for this style of Shiraz. So we find ourselves in the Canberra district uh, really in the in pole position for this new style of cool climate Shiraz which is savoury and ethereal and subtle and spicy and of course it works so well with food so a lot of those things have come together we found the right site we got the right varieties in there I myself travelled to the Rhone Valley in France where I saw the, this in Cote Roti this particular area just in the northern section of the Rhone Valley where they did the the Shiraz Viognier blend so I brought that idea back to the family business and my dad had planted some Viognier a few years earlier with a view to making a, a straight white Viognier wine, which we, we do. But I came back with this excitement for the Shiraz Viognier co-fermented together, just a little bit of Viognier in with the Shiraz. And of course, we first did that over 20 years ago now. And as you know, David, that's our most famous wine, which is celebrated all over the world. The Clonakilla Shiraz Viognier is amazingly to me, seen now as one of the benchmarks examples of Australian wine. <laughs> 